name is Elsie Vargas Jr. And my name is Joshua Pedroza. It is a blessing to be here this morning. We are members of the Leesburg Seventh-day Adventist Church and are pathfinders in the Soaring Eagles Pathfinder Club. We have also started a ministry run by youth and aimed towards reaching out to other youth and children for Christ. In addition to that, we are active in local evangelism at our church. We are thankful for Mr. Ian Nugent for extending the invitation for us to come here this morning and share with you the message God has put in our hearts. It is our prayer that you will be blessed by what we share from God's word this morning. The title of this morning's devotional message is Faithful Witnesses. Before we begin, however, let us bow our heads for another word of prayer to ask for God's lead and guidance. Father, we thank you for another opportunity you've given us to take some time to reflect on your word. We ask now that you would send your Holy Spirit to be with us and to guide us and teach us the lessons that you would have us to learn today. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The disciples of Jesus in the upper room sad, discouraged, or rather confused. The events of the past week have seemed to occur at lightning speed. By the end of the week, Jesus, the beloved Lord, was dead. And in addition to that, there are rumors going around now that he had risen from the dead, and some said that they were to blame. On top of all their sadness, discouragement, and confusion was added fear and worry to the religious leaders who would find them in the upper room and lead them to their execution. Just then, the disciples felt as if someone was watching them. They took a quick glance around the room and noticed figures standing. And it had the resemblance of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself. At first, they were fearful that this might be a ghost or apparition. But then the being spoke, saying, Peace be with you. The Bible tells us that Jesus showed the disciples the marks in his side and the scars in his hands. They realized that it was indeed him. Then he said something extremely important to all who profess the name of Christ. Please turn and read your Bibles to John chapter 20, verse 21. Here Jesus says something not only to his, to his um, disciples present, but to all his disciples down through the ages. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. So here God tells us that he sends us to do an important work, the work of spreading the gospel to the entire world. Forty days after Jesus appeared to those disciples in the upper room, he stood with them on the Mount of Olives just before he ascended to heaven. He gave them a command, a commission. He told them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This great commission is repeated all throughout the Bible. And from different passages of scripture, we find different details concerning this great work to which God has commissioned us. Number one, in the proclamation of the gospel, all Christians are to be included. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Paul encouraged Timothy, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You see, there are no age limits in the work of God. Samuel was called to be a prophet when he was just a boy. David was a mere lad when anointed to be the next king of Israel. Naaman's maid was just a girl, yet God used her to be a witness to the pagan general of the Syrian army. We are thankful to the church, and specifically the general conference, for the different ministries it has provided to help us become active in the work of God. Ministries such as Pathfinder Sabbath School and AY. Those ministries are helping to prepare us for the calling God has for our lives. 
For we realize that Jesus did not say, go, but just to the old and experienced, or go, but just to those with PhDs. He said, go. And that means all of his disciples, all who take upon themselves the name Christian. The only qualification for the work of God is the willingness to follow his leading and be used by his spirit. And if we're truly willing to receive a gift, of the Holy Spirit, God will give us that gift. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, Jesus said, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? God is more than willing to pour out the Spirit. But are we willing to receive it? Willing enough to pray and ask earnestly for the gift of God's Spirit? Second, in the proclamation of the Gospel, we must be faithful to God's Word. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1-5, through 5, we read the message of Paul to a young pastor in Ephesus by the name of Timothy. These are his last words. He's in prison and he's about to be executed. But he has something extremely important that he wants to say. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, Paul says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Paul tells Timothy, preach the word, but he also tells Timothy that a time will come when the message he preaches will be very popular. In fact, it will get so bad that people would actually pick and choose the gospel they like and follow the preacher who preaches it. But Paul says nothing about changing the message to make it popular. Rather, he says to be faithful, to do the work of an evangelist. Stick to the message. We're not to change it. We are to preach the word. Number three, in the proclamation of the gospel, we hasten the return of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, Jesus told his disciples, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then, and will come. The parallel to this is found in Revelation chapter 14, where we find the everlasting gospel message that we as Seventh-day Adventists are to be proclaiming to the world. In verse 6, John describes a movement of people who are preaching the everlasting gospel to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Then, just eight verses later, after the work is completed, he beholds one like the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, ready to reap the harvest of the earth. So we have an even greater incentive to obey God's great gospel commission. For we know once the work is done, we will receive our eternal reward. We will realize the fulfillment of our dreams, the consummation of our hope. Yes, Christ will come, descending from heaven with thousands of angels. The dead in Christ will rise and will be caught up into the air to meet our Savior. This is the blessed hope. This is the reason why we are called Adventists, for we look forward to the second advent, the return of Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven. So, according to what we just studied in the Bible, we find that in the gospel work, all Christians are to be included. We must be faithful to the message that God has given us. And the, when the work is completed, our Savior will return. So as we live our daily lives, let us remember the work God has called us to do, why we are here to do it, and let us look forward to the day when Christ shall return. And if we are faithful, 
one day soon, we will hear those blessed words coming from our Savior. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Let us bow our heads and look closely to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us gather together this morning to hear God's word. Help us to apply to our life, work, and ministry all that what we have learned in this place this morning. May you help us with your spirit to prepare your people and the world for your second coming. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.